Hi, and welcome to the second episode in this mini-series I'm doing, Breaking Bad Photoshop Habits. I'm Dave Cross, I want to talk to you about another bad habit that I see people do, which is merging and flattening. And on the surface, they're not a horribly bad thing. Well, they kind of are. Because here's the thing, anytime you merge or flatten layers, you're throwing away an opportunity to either change your mind or reuse your work or see how you did it. And that's really a key thing. I think a lot of people when they hear talk about working non-destructively only think of change my mind. But one of the things I hear all the time from people is I did something in Photoshop, I saved it and I went back the next day or a month later and I have no idea how I did it because I was just kind of experimenting. And, and that's a very common situation. Well, if you keep all your layers as best you can, then among other things, it also gives you the opportunity to look inside and go, oh, that's how I did it. And rem both remind you, but also mean you can reuse things. And I ask people all the time, so why did you merge those layers together? And one of the most common responses I hear, well, one of two things, I just always have, or I'm worried about file size. So let's talk about both those things for a second. I think a lot of the way we work in Photoshop, the habits we develop are based on what was necessary at a certain time. If you think back a few versions ago of Photoshop, there were no such things as smart objects, for example, so we had to often consider things like, well, I'll have to merge or duplicate or do something to work around it. And as a result, we still do things the same way. So now, with things like smart objects, we can eliminate a lot of those uh, habits that we've developed. The other thing is, as every so often I hear people say, well, I started merging layers because I was worried the file size was getting large. And yes, there will be times where your file is so large that you'll start getting warnings in Photoshop saying, no, I can't do it. But honestly, if you're worried about the file size, for the most part, go buy more storage. And I don't want to sound sarcastic, but really, in today's world, storage is cheap. And I've had this expression I've said for the last few years, storage is cheap, your time isn't. So if you end up merging together a bunch of layers because of file size, and then two months from now you go back into it and realize you can't reuse the same work, then that's really unfortunate because now just because of file size you're having to do work over again. So let me show you an example of the kind of thing I'm talking about is the, the corner we can paint ourselves into potentially if we merge things together. So let's look at this simple example here and say that all I want to do is create uh, some design element I'm going to use on a web page or in print or something. And I want to have a series of little boxes. So I've just added a new layer and let's fill that with some color. And now I want to have a series of boxes going across the page evenly spread out. Well, one of the ways I can do that is press Command Option T or Control Alt T. And what that does is it means it's going to put me into free transform, but a little bit different because now it's going to transform a copy. So I'm just going to hold down the shift key and say I want the second one about that far apart and hit enter. Now I press basically the entire left side of my keyboard, command option shift T on the Mac, control alt shift T, and that's basically the keyboard shortcut for whatever you just did, do it again. And now eventually I have boxes all the way across my screen. And at this point my layers panel looks ridiculous because I've got all of these layers. Now the temptation of many people is to say, well now that I've done that, this is getting too complex looking, so let me select all of these layers here and merge them together. And while you could do that, my concern is once again, what if later on you want to alter it in some way or reuse the same work and you're unable to. So instead, here's a couple of possible options. The first one would be to simply choose this command, new group from layers. And if I want to call it something, I can. And now my layers panel looks much more organized and I can hide and show and can also take the move tool and move them all at the same time as if they're one element. So this is on some level the equivalent of merging, but better in the sense that I still have access to all of these shapes. Now here's another reason why people used to merge things is when I have multiple layers and I want to apply a layer style to all of them. Well now in the last couple of versions of Photoshop, we can also apply layer styles to a group. So for example, if I want to emboss all those boxes, because I applied a bevel and emboss to the group, everything within the group automatically has that style 
applied to it. And the advantage of, again, working this way is now if I decide that maybe a, the, the spacing is off so I want to get, let's look at the last box and we'll just delete that one and now we'll take this one, drag it over here and now if I select all the layers I can go to the commands up in the options bar including the distribute commands and it will redistribute them automatically. I couldn't have done that if those layers were merged. And it may not seem like a big thing, but I'd rather have that option than have to start all over again because I merged the layers together. Now, the other option, let's just get rid of this group for a second. I'm going to choose delete group and only the group, so I have all my layers, is to take all of these layers and then right click anywhere and choose convert to smart object. Now, once again, it looks like I just have that one single layer, I can apply layer styles, I can move it, I can do all those things, but now if I need to access the original information, I can double click on it, there's all my layers, so if I needed to scale them all or resize them or do anything, I could do that. So in the same scenario as before, I could delete the first one, drag this one over, select all the layers, and then do that redistribute thing, then I just have to close it and save it and it updates in my document. Now, here's the thing that about merging. Will there be times where it's just simpler to merge? Yes, there will. However, I'm finding there are less and less of those times where I can't just do get to the same end result by doing a smart object to give me more options or even putting things in a group. Now let's talk about flattening for a second. For many years I've said the same thing in all my seminars. I suggest we think of flatten as Photoshop's F word. It's bad and you shouldn't use it. Now people say, but you have to flatten in order to make a JPEG. Yeah, but here's the way I look at it. Don't flatten and save, save a flattened copy. Might sound like kind of the same thing, but the key word in there is copy. So I'm gonna save this file as a PSD file with my layers and smart objects embedded inside so I can access them at any time, and I'll use the save as command to make a copy that is flattened. So let's take a look. If I go to save as, you'll see that it's prompting me to save in Photoshop format because I have layers. But watch what happens here where you see the little layers checkbox. As soon as I say, well, actually I want a JPEG, it has to flatten it. So with this save as command, in one step, it's doing everything I need. It's making a copy that's flattened in a different file format. So my workflow is to always have a PSD file just in case and to save a copy that's flattened. Now, a lot of people will look at this and go, yeah, but I just, for, sometimes it's just easier to flatten. I don't change my mind. Well, again, please remember the, the couple of things about when you preserve all your layers. Yes, it lets you change your mind. It also lets you reuse work you've done before. So if you've created some effect that's a couple of combinations of filters, if you don't have a layered version, you can't reuse them and you might not be able to figure out what you did. And that's the third reason is also because it lets you go back and kind of reverse engineer and figure out what you did. So when people ask me, well, is there any downside to keeping a layered version with all the layers? Yeah, the, the one downside is your file size is going to be bigger, but you kind of already know what I feel about that. Go buy more storage. So hopefully when you're faced with a situation and you have a habit of merging or flattening, think twice and think, is there a way I can do this without having to do those fairly permanent acts of either merging or flattening? I'm Dave Cross. We'll see you next time for another episode of Breaking Bad Photoshop Habits.